drive but whatever can we talk about nando's hair real quick my hair yeah just playing, in the I'm last just podcast <laughs> nanda was widow i just <laughs> i just got it done last week it looks good thank it looks you good. It thank looks you i was very happy with it we're gonna get into it all but first okay, of all should we start sorry guys we're welcome to episode 46 well, we're back episode 46 already? 46 all right episode 46 everybody we're we back are back it's been a after while after a little break that we took like almost a month damn that's we crazy. didn't want to Dang, take it but dude we just had to busy so season bro it's been kicking our butts we we're busy yeah that's, this is probably the busiest season for you guys fall this is definitely um it. everyone yeah it's fall. i think it's gonna start calming down for both of us a little bit but mm-hmm you know still busy but not as busy so we're trying to make more time again it's been like a for whole this. three four weeks so we apologize for that but we're yeah back. sorry guys and we have Bye. a guest another one mm-hmm. uh my beautiful friend Mi gente bonita, mi gente chula, ¿cómo están? Mírala, she got in her radio voice. Ay, wait. Bro, she gets down with it. So. No, I'm very excited. I'm very honored to be here. Thank you guys We're for having me. We're happy to have you. Me. Thank um, you for coming, Anna. I am a huge, huge, huge uh, fan. I think I've seen so many, so many. I'm not, not todos. No, no me voy a ver mentirosa, ¿verdad? But... Um, I've seen a lot of your mm-hmm. your podcasts. We appreciate the support no, appreciate for sure. It. Yeah, it's hard to watch all of them because yeah, like, there's a lot. Has time <laughs> to watch all of them, but and the concept is cool. Um, the fact that you guys have a platform for, you know, creatives, local creatives, that's awesome. I'm I'm a big fan of supporting local talent. So, yeah. the fact that you guys have this platform for everyone is super rad, guys. So, yeah. mad thank you. To both no, it's been you fun. You said your name, so for those of you who don't know. Nena Godinez, right? Hello, everyone. My name is Nena Godinez. I am a local DJ, radio DJ. I think, is um, that what? <laughs> what, what, what would like be the title? Yeah, yeah, I mean, like so on air personality. Um, I, I think a personality is a good. I yeah. think yeah, it's a good description mm-hmm. for you. I, I really like what I do. Um, I'm on a Spanish station, Juan 101.7 FM, and I also am on the local newscast. Uh, I'm on Channel 2 on KTVN, and I do the traffic reports. No sé por qué me pusieron a mí, ni me conozco las calles, but... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm doing that, guys, and... No, pues te pusieron ahí porque you know, you know how to do news not how to handle yeah, it what, 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 what is it fake it till you make it yeah god i remember giving my first traffic report um they just kind of threw me in there they said hey um you know so and so who's doing traffic is no longer going to do it would you would you like to um take over y me lo pintaron bien bonito it's gonna be great exposure and this and that Nadie me dijo la chinga que iba a ser. <laughs> it's like a constant. I mean, it's traffic. We were just talking about it off mm-hmm. air. Um, how crazy it's been it's lately. Just like constantly checking. Exactly. So from update. like three to six, it's nonstop. Um, just seeing what's going on in northern mm-hmm. Nevada. Right on. Well, let's take it back, Nana. When did you even get into this whole space of radio and doing and all these things? Because that's definitely not like a very common field right like how do you even end you're really the only person i know who's doing it so really Mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean i think we we all agree that uh radio is kind of dying down a little bit per se um we have all these streaming services that Mm -hmm. that kind of take over like pandora and um you know apple music and spotify but there's a really fun thing about radio uh it's keeping it local. Um, people like that local engagement. Uh, el noticiero and, you know, local. Mm-hmm. People get to know what's, what's happening, what's going on. So I think that works really well with radio. But um, I started I started working for a broadcast company, uh, Spanish Broadcasting, in, when I was 18. I turned 18. And I was a receptionist. And they did Spanish TV and Spanish radio. Um, and it's all networking. You just kind of did make you your just kind of like one day decided to do it, or did somebody like that knew you? Where well, was like, oh, you you would be like a good fit for something like that. So funny enough, um, 
I've always been very chatty. Uh, I've been uh, very social. Uh, uh -huh. I, I can spark up a conversation pretty easy with everyone, or I think so. But I started doing pageants when I was like 16, and they were just local pageants. And that's really where like my exposure came from. Mm -hmm. um, before that, I was going to karaoke bars at like 15 and <laughs> hanging out <laughs> with like all these grown ass people. Uh -huh. yeah. um, y de ahí conocí um, uh, this mariachi guy. And he said, hey, you, you know, I really like how you, how you do this ranchero music. Would you like to open up a show? At, uh, this was at the Grand Sierra, at the Grand Theater years ago. And at the same time, I was also doing pageants. And one thing, you know, led to another. He was connected to a local on-air personality as well uh, for one of the Spanish stations in town. And then this person, this on-air personality, uh, contacted me and said, hey, I heard from you from so-and-so. Would you like to come in and do a jingle? Um, a jingle is a radio spot. It's like a catchy tune, like, oh, 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 O'Reilly. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. That's a jingle. Yeah. Um, so he said, hey, do you, do you want to come in and help out and do a jingle? Sure. Um, yo no sabía quién era. And... Uh -huh. My mom was flipping out. ¿Quién te llamó y no sé qué? I don't know who that is. Yeah. But we went down to the station, and that's how I got connected to him. I learned a lot of things from him. And with time, he was just like, hey, we need a receptionist. And I applied, and I got the job, and I moved my way up. I became a sales assistant. And then from there, uh, he kind of started throwing me into doing radio we had very small local segments mm -hmm. all of the programming would come from los angeles so all the local segments were short they were like a minute mm -hmm. and during those breaks we'd utilize them to do ticket giveaways for bailes or concerts or anything that was happening mm -hmm. and i started doing them and i really liked them and i would get awesome feedback uh i actually remember this uh, specific señor que me dijo, un día tú tienes que tener tu propio, tu propio show, tu propio show, tu propio programa. And uh, years later, when I started La Neta con Nena, which is what I do now on Juan 101.7, uh, me lo encontré in one of our remotes, uh, which is when we're out in the community. Mm -hmm. And it was really exciting. He was like, yo te dije, yo te dije. I got all emotional. Oh, I was like, ay, señor, sí. Este fue el primero que creyó en mí. Sí, yeah. so, se siente bonito. That's kind of how I got started. Um, I ended up at Reno Media Group uh, in 2019. I left the broadcast place that I was at, and I never thought I'd do radio again. I've always done um, business administration, uh, human resources work. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started working for an office, and it was only part-time. I had to go back to school to finish my math class that I never finished, and then I finally got my <laughs> diploma. But anyway, um, I was working only part-time. And then I was bored, and you know, word got around that I wasn't at the other place, and they hired me to do commercial, like production. Um, and slowly they were like, hey, you want to be on air? <laughs> like again, or what do you mean? Well, like on the on the news channel or uh, for Reno Media Group. So um. uh, when so they initially hired me to do all of the commercials in Spanish, uh -huh. all of the production, and then slowly it transitioned into let's get you on air, um. like on la neta con nena. Right let's on. give you your own show. So what? Oh, um, so, oh, I see. I see what you're saying. What What is like your your show and like focus on for people who don't know? Um, that's a good question. I, I get that question a lot. And it's difficult because it's not, and this is why I, I don't normally refer to it as a show. Uh, I'm just kind of like an on-air personality. I have my designated time, Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. But I'm more of like in just talent um, that comes on. Um, a show would be more like uh, Erasno y la Chocolata, which oh, is a great okay. show in Spain. Where <coughs> mm -hmm. you have like multiple personalities who are but doing. But not all the time, right? Not all the time, no. Sometimes you just do it yourself? So, yeah, I do it by myself all the time. Mm -hmm. So I just come in, I do maybe five or six breaks an hour. Um, 
at the end of the day, people want to tune into the radio for music, mm -hmm. or at least that's our es nuestro lema, mm -hmm. tocando lo que le gusta. Mm -hmm. So we play a lot of music. Um, I can have like people on and i have done it before like chava's been on uh on la on neta con nena. he was yeah co i remember that and yeah. it's really fun to I have how accomplished on. when i went on there <laughs> i know he was talking about it so much when he went i was so excited for it yeah Chava was a natural he was all oh he's doing it real so Chava. nervous man so, so fun nervous, dude, but i even had to take a shot in there <laughs> yeah we both took a shot and it was it yes, was great dude. no he killed it though it i watched nervous, it yeah he did Right? No, he did great. And so when Chava went, um, do you remember how we did kind of like shorter segments? Yeah. We did them like no more than like two minutes. Uh -huh. And so um, it's just funny. Radio, there's a lot of like do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to be on air for five consecutive minutes because then people tune out that way unless mm -hmm. it's really really good but that's like not my focus. So I talk about random things, um, whatever is out in the media. I like to um, talk about local stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. um, there's an accident here and here. You know, right. if you're driving home, be cautious. Uh, but we make it fun. We do ticket giveaways, uh, a lot of local stuff. So do you also talk about like celebrities and stuff like that or not? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. Que el Cristiano da a Libelinda, que se van a casar. All the celebrity cheese Yeah, I yeah. feel like, you know, the, especially Mexicans, they tune in and they're Somos actually arguenderos. invested in, like, celebrities and they want to stay up to date with what they're up to. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. So, like, yeah, el Cristiano da manda el cabrón. Que hizo la canción con MS and he wasn't supposed to. Yeah. yeah. We, That's funny. I cover all, all of those things. So That's hilarious. It's funny because I have to be really digging to find these things while I'm not on social media. So mm. navigating mm. that is Can we talk about that? Or yeah, no social media. <laughs> no what is the reason behind media. no social media? Yeah, tell us why. Um, so I was on Facebook about half a year ago. Mm -hmm. Um. And I do like I, I do these like social media breaks, or I have done them in the past. I haven't been on Instagram in a long time. I would open it, I'd post something, and then the next day I would like close it. Mm -hmm. um, at first, it started with with uh, time. I would spend too much time on it, mm -hmm. and slowly it just transitioned into well, I feel better when I'm off of it, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, I don't know. It's just, it's a weird thing, right? It's not your thing. It's not my I thing. Think it, I think the, the points you made, though, like, I don't think it's for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think it's okay not to have it. You Thank know what I mean? You. Like, well, it's yeah, not, I mean, like, I it's agree, fine. But yeah. I find it interesting that you're well known and, you know, you're out you there. You don't out have there, it, but yeah. You don't have one. I think totally. it also just depends what you do, too. Like, what social media you have like me i have a facebook but i don't use it right. I, i use it to talk to like my family in mexico and that's it mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. literally and then twitter i use not as much as i used to but i use instagram the most now and gotcha. i just think it's more because like i take pictures otherwise yeah I probably you have wouldn't. to cater to your audience because you i think before i was tools. a photographer like i used instagram but like barely but it wasn't you know? like personal like yeah no and like twitter was my thing before but then when i like got into photography they swapped so it was like mm. instagram became the one i'm on more and then twitter's just kind of there now for like random stuff like right i don't even use my twitter for picture stuff i just go there yeah. to tweet stupid stuff so all the time. there's a bunch of stuff so <laughs> yeah i've never been on facebook. tiktok last time TikTok? last time that TikTok? i was on facebook You had com I said something about like guys I've never been on TikTok and I had like all these comments from people <laughs> like oh mean or don't do it you'll get yeah. hooked. Oh yeah, I TikTok's very addicting. Yeah. You yeah. had said that you weren't on it. I I wasn't either. on it. I and then he now. got hooked in. It's a little weird though because I don't go on it that often, but when I do, you, you find stay me on at 5 a.m. watching videos. <laughs> you get hooked. <laughs> You get the hooked. worst thing you can do is go on TikTok like when you're laying down to go to sleep because you will not oh, go to no. sleep for oh like three gosh, hours. So you just get true. lost. It is bad. Looking down. It Everyone. Is very bad. That is like the common thing that I hear. 
you'll get hooked you'll get hooked hooked. it's just entertaining you know there's so much stuff on there that you're like scrolling for so long and every little video is short so you don't think you're wasting that much time i'll just watch a couple more and then yeah and then a couple more turns into like like, two hours (laughs) yeah you're there for like two hours and you're like wait a second bro it's two in the morning i I do have my cousin um who i'm really close with who sends me TikToks, TikToks and I get like links on my phone. Oh, and they're so funny. Yeah. Hilarious. I have like a few friends that I do that with where we just send each other. T- we yeah. don't talk. We don't text. Right. The only <laughs> thing we do is send each other a video and we'll just reply. And that's like our conversation. That's for the day. so cool. That is very, it's interesting because like I said, there's so many social media yeah. apps that you can just get overwhelmed easy too. Seriously. So, oh yeah. 100%. I respect the fact that you don't want to be on it. And I feel like yeah, you don't need to be on it in a way because I don't. You like know, you're doing just you're fine sad. without it. And that's always my argument with like my colleagues who are like, Nana, but this, but this, and you know, social media presence. It's, it's mm-hmm. important, and it is. It's a really it helpful tool. It helps. it helps. But that's always my argument. I'm like, well people are listening to me without they don't, it. they don't need to know what mm-hmm. i look like i mean radio personalities back in the day there wasn't any internet yeah there was no face to the voice type thing exactly so yeah. it, it's damn that's kind of good bro you see how i spit that out really quick <laughs> <laughs> no face to the voice i just came oh, on on the fly oh. just kidding <laughs> speaking of things my favorite thing that was said on this podcast so far i even wrote it down because oh, yeah, i wanted no. to oh she got it. she pulled out the notes bro she came, she came for prepared us, Chava for Marquez, episode 44 minute oh nine. oh she's oh, got seven. the time stamp <laughs> she she's got time stamps oh, she got receipts being a hoe should be normalized <laughs> <laughs> Of course he said that. Oh my Nena, god. How are you gonna come up with like Elaborate. Tell me more, dude. Nena, I, I wanna hear this too, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to bring the heat like that. Okay, oh, she puts you on blast. Especially well, <laughs> we were just talking. <laughs> <laughs> we were just having a conversation, oh, me and you, right snap. now. Oh, Chavita. Look, Nana, life is short. Okay. <laughs> and sometimes you kind of just get <clears throat> caught up in these circles that. <laughs> <laughs> Nana, how are you going to. This is unbelievable. I, <laughs> you got to say it. Yeah, you got to elaborate. Man. I really want to hear this because we were literally just talking about this nah, topic. Oh, yeah? Tell, yeah. tell me more. No, oh, no, I can't here, put them on blast like here, that. Um, <laughs> I can't expose them like that. I mean, everybody goes through phases. <laughs> <laughs> it? So it's a phase. It's a phase, it's a he says. Phase. It's been a and phase. And I just feel like you shouldn't get, you know, judged for it, I guess. Hey, I'm all for it. Well, hey, I'm not a hoe. Just because I defend hoes. Que dice el público? <laughs> We're gonna we'll, hoes, we'll see what the comments. The exposing Chava. <coughs> we'll see what all the oh, comments please say. Please don't, please don't. That Pero que te gusta Chava? Ver cuenta. That'll be the end of me. So you want to talk about my life? Yeah, absolutely. So you tell me it took me forty six episodes to bring you. <laughs> <laughs> it is what I I do. I I have to ask questions. Bro, yeah, she's that's that's her job, low key. Exactly. So she's just curious. About no, you. my love life has been interesting to say the least. Okay. Been going on dates here and there. I feel like nothing comes out of it because of my issues. You know, not necessarily because of the person or whatever. Okay. So just trying to work through my stuff. I have Your braces s- are off. My braces are off. How's the kissing? So <laughs> <laughs> he he glowed up after that, man. This man went from like a six to a solid nine and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the picture when he took him. I'm like, damn, Chava's small looks really nice, low key. Yeah. <laughs> no I homo, bro. Like, you, you look really good yeah. without him. <laughs> I am really happy with them. They're not perfect, though, but they had to take him out. And I was like, it's okay. Did you see yeah. all the heat he got for the pictures of him before? Oh, no, no. See, dude, I this went is, at him pretty uh, bad. This is what you're missing. I think, the, I think the one I sent him was pretty messed Basically, up. Do you have a before picture? Oh, oh, I'll show you. May I please see this Nana. picture? His you teeth can, were. You can see he needed all. those braces. Let's just was say that. Let's just say he needed those. Those braces, so by I'm the sorry. heat, what do you mean, Nando? Like who was giving him crap? So let me tell him. Let me tell him. Uh, I Show posted her. the before and after on my story, okay. and then somebody resi- decided to roast me just like that, and I was like, "Oh, this is fucking." They're fun. like, "Oh, this is so what you I look like." Share that rose, and I was like, "Okay, guys, roast me. Like I'm asking for it, please." Okay. <laughs> and you know, people, people, people roasted me. Yeah, I went at them pretty hard. People have. Um, <laughs> I just found the perfect picture of a character from a movie where I'm like, you look like this dude. And he's like, that's low key messed up. Oh, ese sí te dolió. That one was pretty rough. I think mine was pretty, 
pretty harsh, low key. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but then I hey, complimented. He asked for it. Yeah, he yeah, asked, I asked for it. For it. I'm like, you asked to get roasted. I'm not gonna go light on you, bro. I'm gonna yes. go all out. Some people were even talking about like, oh, are you doing okay after all these roasts? I'm like, dude, I'm like, are you? Are you in fine. your feelings? <laughs> oh dang, it was that bad. It was, it was pretty bad. See, this is the stuff that I'm like, okay, this is I why should you, really be yeah, on. <laughs> this is why you don't ask gonna, to get roasted. Um, just uh, show you the picture, and I'll read you the roast. I love okay? it. Let's do it. So here's the photo. Right there. I'm just going to, if you want to just hold it like that, right? Damn, Chava. That's a big change, right? That is a big change. Oh. Wow. Let's go away. And then you look like you used to bite people for fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Who said that, bro? That was the first time. I don't remember at all. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? I didn't remember Boy, that one. That one's hilarious, though. dude. And then uh, the other one is like, you went from where my hug to new fun. Who the <laughs> And then we got Sloth from the Goonies. Which That's is who I guy. told him. Oh, and then he, he does said look I look like sorry, that. Gemma, no, you don't. He looked like him Not in anymore. that picture. <laughs> I saw that photo of him. I'm like, you look like Sloth from the Goonies. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then somebody, you had those ankle bitters or whatever. And then. <laughs> I can't get over the first oh, one. Oh, and then somebody We're said, ahora si a comer chichi a gusto. Oh, no way. But like, oh when God. lying through your teeth goes wrong, like. Do you know people how do people yes. come up with this dude the my hug people oh came my for your God, neck that's funny no the you, you you look like you used to bite people for fun is hilarious that's hilarious, that's hilarious. just like stuff like just that, roast you know? like that yeah, i mean he asked for it though and exactly. it's funny because i don't mind that at all and in a, if anything i feel like he helps my confidence my, um well my confidence but other than that like my social media like it's funny to go you interact on my story with and see totally, stuff like that. Totally, you know? so it's it's a good. It doesn't always have to be like so, so serious. serious. No, I hundred percent agree. You can just be playful. Me talking about being a hoe is like, oh, well, you know, oh, that's just talk about it. You talk about it. You make, you make <laughs> I think it's cool to like interact with your followers outside of like taking totally. pictures. You know, Chava, you are pretty funny, dude. Like, uh, you know what I, I get guess. told all the time, bro? And like, I meet a client, they're like. You and Chava's friendship is like my favorite thing to watch. Yes. Because I realize me and you go at each other so bad. Solid chemistry. I think that is my favorite part of. Um, there was like one night where I was like up watching super late. I was like, I really need to go be to bed. And I texted Chava. And of course, Chava's awake. Oh, oh yeah. This up, man baby. doesn't sleep. Yeah. I was like, dude, oh, up, so <laughs> funny. You and Nando are just hilarious. And I love the way you guys interact with each other. Oh, well, thank you, yeah. Nana. Thank that's you. That's very nice of you. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we've been making it work. <laughs> yeah, we definitely click. It's easy. Works out. Yeah. Um, and people see that. Yeah. Well, I think our friendship came from like very serious like hey let's do a shoot bro and like right because super you just about, about photography yeah and then like we just i think the more we hung out on each other our personalities both came out and we realized like we're kind of the same in that aspect of like we'll just say whatever yeah and be dumb all the time <laughs> I feel so like it worked that, out and so, the podcast has been just a, a yeah. great idea it just well, shows i think yeah I, creative. I think the podcast has shown how me and him are with each other and just as people anyway yeah which is kind of cool because most people don't know us like that so it's kind of no like, way i feel like i know you through this podcast really it's i mean that's it's, cool it might be a little creepy that's why i know what you drive <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, she straight pulled up I, I i saw your car i'm like how'd you know that was my car like okay so let's <laughs> let's look at this here she you guys met for the first time here today yes you know way more about him than he knows about you mm -hmm. yes and that feeling freaks me out sometimes really like okay. i show up to <clears throat> no go for it no go no no it. i was just gonna piggyback on that that's why i don't like being on social media mm -hmm. it freaks me out the not knowing who has your pictures who has mm -hmm. this because i at one point people would take my stuff and i'm, I'm sure it happens all the time where you know people yeah. have fake accounts and whatnot mm -hmm. but it's kind of creepy no, i agree it's a little creepy. scary sometimes to like because you're so out there and then mm -hmm people keep up with you sometimes and like yeah i'll have that happen like he said too where they show up and they bring something up i totally forgot about exactly and they remember you know yeah oh like on your story i saw this and I'm like dude that was like two months ago what the heck like i don't even remember that anymore Can you, you imagine know? like the massive pressure of 
like celebrities. Oh my god, no. no. We were talking about that. That's the what last they I would, I would That's know. They all go insane. I, I don't envy them for all that media attention that they yeah. get. Oh god, no. Because this is nothing, like nothing compared nothing. to what they go through. Us, us like being known a little out here and people bringing up things or they mm -hmm. recognize us doesn't even amount to like the attention celebrities exactly. get. Exactly. So that's why I'm like, yeah, I don't blame them when they're just like, dude, get away from me. Like, I don't want to talk you, to you. Right? How do you feel when people refer to you as a famous person? I do you like that? Right? Well, no man, I hate that. No me ni en mi rancho. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that either. No, I mean, I just, um, it's neat. It's neat going out in the community and having people recognize mm -hmm. you. But it, just like Chava was saying, it also kind of gets you thinking like, who knows? Mm -hmm. Like I put one on, no, nah, I'm not going to give people ideas. <laughs> but <laughs> I like start thinking like, Oh, this and this, oh, yeah, and, this yeah. and people could know this and find me here, mm -hmm. here. So I'm not going to give anyone ideas. Yeah. But it's a little scary, but anyway, for creatives by creatives, how did this idea, <laughs> como nació? Oh, okay. she's taking on the role. Yeah. She's the interview. Yeah, yeah. She's in the she just has the perfect voice yeah. for it too. She's like, okay, <laughs> for create and i'm like damn bro we're being interviewed <laughs> on our own oh, podcast yeah, yeah. <laughs> because again i know that based off what i've seen you tweeted about it chava. no he tweeted about it i tweeted oh, about you it you tweeted about it okay and then chava was super on board mm -hmm. um how I did like, you guys come up with the concept though i i thought about it from like around that time i saw a couple other people in town start mm -hmm. podcasts oh okay um and then i was like listening to podcasts where they bring guests in like just mm -hmm. in general any podcast you know and i just always felt like especially here locally the people they would bring were always like big name people mm -hmm. you know they weren't really bringing in like the come up right or mom like and pop shots yeah like places. the people who are not quite there yet but they're working towards it mm -hmm. or they just started and the idea popped into my head like i just tweeted i'm like i really want to start a podcast where i interview local creatives who may or may not be established like it right. doesn't matter if people know you if they do know you like either one works you know and a lot of people like gave a lot of positive feedback to it like they're like yeah that sounds really interesting like no one's really doing something like that where they just bring whoever totally you know? yeah and he was definitely on board. Like, he replied to me, he's like, dude, I'll host it with you. So that kind of motivated me more to, like, really get serious about it. Because it was just a thought, but I also didn't know how to go about it. Yeah. And he definitely handles all the video and the editing and everything. Because I don't know how to do any of this. So. Really? <laughs> like, no, I, I can't. If he told me right now, edit this podcast, I'd be like, huh? <laughs> what so, do I do? <laughs> <laughs> you use uh, Audition for the audio? I do uh, gra the the one from Apple. Um, oh, like GarageBand? GarageBand, yeah. Because he, he had like all the video stuff. You know, he does more video than I do. And so I like texted him about it. I'm like, dude, like I'm like for reals, like really wanting to try it out and like actually start it. And he's and like, the whoa. the thing is, I had been on a podcast as a guest like a month before. I was like, that was fucking dope. Like, yeah. I, was super excited I had only been it. on like one other one a few years back. And um, like when he showed interest, it kind of motivated me more to get serious because I'm like, well, I have a co-host now. Like totally. I would have I would have probably felt more weird doing it by myself. Like I kind of mm -hmm. like that we both do it instead of just me or something. And, you know, like I said, he had all the video stuff. And then he told me about this place and he's like, I have a spare room at my house that we can use we can just decorate it and i'm like oh cool we don't even have to rent oh, anywhere yeah. out and obviously i just told him like hey we can split the cost of everything whatever and then he was like well i'll handle the editing and stuff which he's crazy because he likes to do it immediately which i'm like bro you don't have to do it that fast <laughs> but whatever <laughs> and so i kind of just took the role of like bringing the guests in kind of thing and all that nice. but he definitely does a lot so he carries wow. this oh, podcast big time yeah, so it, did you guys have to fun. do research on like microphones and getting um uh yeah i did i went through for the first like 30 episodes we had these shitty microphones and we would get this stupid <coughs> this, this little, little noise yeah uh, but like, it's all what is it because these are brand new microphones like i didn't know what it yeah was, you know? it definitely got fixed up now and, and obviously then, the space has come a long way like it was nothing oh, like yeah. this yeah at all it's great and it um, looks really nice each in episode here. i like that you guys kind of like move around 
down. And yeah, now we have like this back. This I think this looks nice. Yeah, I like that you moved it that mm-hmm. into the wall yeah. and stuff. And then, yeah, I mean, we kind of just the first episode was just us as like an intro to each other, and then you know the second the second episode our first guest was Chef, who's you know super talented dude from here who's very known. You know, so we were right. like, okay, we're starting with a known person, but then we were bounced back and forth from yeah. like and known, not known. Yeah, we've had people that you guys just have some really started. fun people. Yeah, on. and that's just always been our thing is like we want people to like not feel that they can't come because they're not established. Like, totally. We don't care about your follower account. We don't care about how busy you may or may not be. If you like to do anything creative in town or you're just doing a hobby that most people aren't doing like you can come on here you know like we've never had a radio personality like yourself so they're like our first one you know (laughs) the first one you know and then like this one out here too yeah so So, like that's really exciting because we don't know anything about that environment Mm -hmm. so it's just kind of nice to bounce back and you know we've had photographers we've had videographers which we understand more about but then we all have such a different view on everything totally. that we can piggyback behind each other's like it's cool things you know and it's really neat like we've had girls who model which is like a whole different thing we've had hairstylists now we knew nothing about that like right. how turns out we have a lot of similarities you know and like the next one we're having a tattoo artist, which is exciting. Oh, we've never had that's a tattoo super artist. fun! Mm. Yeah, she's my tattoo artist. Hey, ¿cuál es? A ver, enseñas. Oh, I'm over here. I just got three more today, so today, today. Oh, he <laughs> so is, of, está estrenando ink, guys. <clears throat> so in the span, in the span of three weeks, weeks, I've gotten three weeks? Fi- three weeks. I've gotten five. She told me that Jeez. today. She's like, "How did you go? How did you go from zero to five in three weeks?" I'm like, "I don't know, but I'm here." <laughs> Next you thing we know, hugged. this man's gonna show up with a full sleeve. No, I don't want that many. I don't want to sleep. Do you have everything. tattoos? No, he's I've been telling him me. to go. What? No, I Ponte don't. Una camera. He wants one, but he can't commit. He has commitment issues. I'm Mexican, dude. <laughs> well, that <laughs> whole life, I guess. Or, or oh, so. <laughs> dude, no, I just, I don't know. Like, this is my body, you know. Like the way I look. Like this is. I had been wanting tattoos for years like Like, i'm talking years you Uh know what i mean and when i was younger i definitely dealt with the traditional parents who are like don't get tattoos tattoos yeah exactly but then i think as i got older they were just kind of like whatever if you're gonna get them you get them like you're an adult you know and i just i was really close to getting some last year but i wasn't set on what i wanted so i also didn't want to commit to that because it's there forever so you gotta like you have to think about it a little like what do you really (laughs) want to get you know and then this year i told myself look during fall time when it gets cold i'm gonna go like i don't care i'm gonna set up an appointment i'm gonna go get them i'm finally just gonna say screw it and go do it and i settled on what i wanted and i was lucky enough to find um kim who's my tattoo artist who like she does smaller tattoos, but she also does bigger ones. Oh, cool. And I don't really want... Like, I don't want a full sleeve or anything. Yeah. I want no. smaller tattoos spread out. It's kind of like how I would describe my tattoo ones, you know? That's awesome. And she definitely was just very great about setting everything up and, like, you know, kind of giving you advice of what to do, what not to do after and before. And three weeks ago, I went and I got this one. Rad. And this one. And those were my first two. So this one, a lot of people probably here have heard me talk about a group named Odessa or probably know who Odessa is. But they're a music group, right? My favorite artist of all time, by far. Okay. Chava knows. I put him onto them. (laughs) (laughs) By far. But the symbol also represents two other things that I really like other than just because it's theirs. So it's called a Itzi Hadra. Itzi itsy go quadrant i don't know it's i don't know it's like a shape bro i don't know how to pronounce it it's really hard to pronounce it's like a swedish like shape name all right leave me alone hey, what do you mean? What but basically mean? i'll look it up but basically it represents water like it's a symbol for water so it means like okay. go with the flow type oh, of thing oh i like that and then on a spiritual meaning it means it's it's supposed to bring out creativeness and block out um like bad thoughts pretty much okay so i liked all that about it and i'm like it has three meanings for me you know it has the you know like the water meaning the spiritual one and it's just because odessa's music is just my favorite music ever you know so i always told myself my first tattoo was gonna be this like i was like i'm getting 
or does the symbol no matter what so that is your first tattoo this one yeah the first one right there no way but then this one was on the same day too yeah these two were the same day oh shoot so So this is all super recent yeah yeah. three weeks ago yeah (laughs) in two months guys nando's gonna be covered (laughs) in tattoos (laughs) i'm gonna be all covered no 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 um it just happened that like when i booked them the way her booking system works she was getting really busy and i'm like well i have a few others in mind so i booked the ones i got today the same day they were just three weeks out okay, okay. you know makes sense so i got this one um and then the f 2.8 for all my camera lovers so this is a camera nice. setting i wanted a photography tattoo of course you know it's my life basically so i just didn't want to get a camera i'm like that's a little that's too, cliche too cliche for me yeah and I'm very like minimal, like very like as you can tell, they're very small, like minimal oh, tattoos. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I want to think of something that represents photography for me, but that isn't a camera. That's cool. It took me a while, but I thought at first I was gonna get a symbol that represents f two point eight, which is like a little circle that looks like a little lens. Oh. Okay. But even then, to me, that was like it's almost like getting a symbol, and I just don't want to do that. And on that symbol, it said F2.8 in this format. And I looked at the letters and I'm like, I like that. Like, I kind of just Yeah, like, you make it your own. Yeah. So then I decided like, hey, I'll just do the F2.8 and in the numbers because this is the aperture I shoot in like 90% of the time. It's my favorite aperture on a lens. You know, like if I go do a shoot, it's usually on that That's one. That's cool. So it's like meaningful. And- yeah. Like for me, it's like it obviously represents photography, which is like a huge part of my life. But then it also means a lot because that's what I've been shooting in since basically I started. Exactly. You know? exactly. So that's why I chose this number. Uh, the three I got today, my anime fans will know. <laughs> <laughs> Big on anime, by the way. So this one right here is the symbol. I'll show you because I have it on my case. You see that? No, oh. Yeah. oh, cool. So cool, this cool. is one of my favorite characters Rad, man. in Naruto. So I got his headband. And the other one is basically the same thing, but from a different character who's okay. also like from the same show. Nice. And I, I wanted, anim- I, I mean, I'm getting more anime tattoos eventually, but obviously <laughs> for me, it was like, I'm going to start with something small. They're my two favorite characters in that show. So That's I was just rad. minimal. And then this one. It's just a little mountain range. Little oh, that's super. Wow, she's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really she good. kills Those it. Those lines, man. Yeah, her line work is insane. Yeah, this one I basically designed myself too, which was kind of cool. Like I kind of drew out how I wanted it. Oh, okay. So she obviously just did the just magic made it, and sure. made it. Um, and I got mountains because um, for me, like that's what started photography for me is going on hikes and doing things like that absolutely so nature in general is like i'm a big nature person yeah, as it is and your previous um well i've seen that you're you're a big fan of like oregon and oh like yeah that. like i love to take trips out into nature and stuff so like yeah. for me mountains for me represent like what got me into photography plus something i just enjoy on my own time super neat and i think yeah. that's the fun thing about um you know tattoos is the story that they mm-hmm. care yeah like i that. think some people get random ones that have no meaning they're just like i like the design which i'll probably do that eventually or something but yeah. um for me i wanted my first ones to be something that represented me in some sort of way and i think anyone who knows me really really well they're like that would Nando. tell you that that's these you. four are literally like me and tattoos you know nice yeah. super into nature big on anime cameras odessa yeah. and they'll yeah. be like that's, that's nando right there the the whole life the pack or whatever like the <laughs> starter pack oh the starter pack oh there, no nando. seriously though seriously though like people who have known me or know me really well when they saw that i got these are like dude that's literally so you. You. So that's you. so you, you, you know what i mean i do um i'm impulsive so i've never thought about my tattoos you just go get it i just go get them mm. wow um i have one back here this is my first one and i got it uh it's 17 damn you were young yeah dude so what is it? i like borrowed an id <clears throat> and i went to one of the local yeah you can't even parlors. like legally go at 17 no no <laughs> without parents can, permission yeah i think it's like 16 with parental Parent consent yeah. Te, te dejan. yeah uh but no way just like nando was saying <laughs> but 
I borrowed an ID because I really, really, really wanted one. And I was still in high school. I was a senior and I wanted to be cool. And I had already told all my friends, like, I'm getting a tattoo. Uh, initially, I wanted a Mickey Mouse. Thank God I didn't do a Mickey oh, Mouse. Yeah. Yeah. I'm huge on Disney, but... Not that huge. No, I'm so glad I didn't go with it. Yeah. So I switched my idea super last minute. I got to the tattoo parlor. They had me do some... Um, just paperwork. Yeah. That's Pero how it is the first time. Me pidieron la ID. <clears throat> oh, wow. Never asked me for mm, it. Um, it was like, maybe they just tattoo. assumed like, since you went, they were like, whatever, she's of age. Exactly. But, yeah. And they did have a section where it's like, Oh, driver's Are license, driver's license, something? yeah. Number, date yeah. of birth. Mm -hmm. Um, so if anything, that was your that. problem, you know, the exactly. Kind of like, Oh, we, we went through the process. And I'm, I like acoustic music a lot. Um, I'm very, me gusta mucho la guitarra. Do you play uh, guitar? I wish, man. Oh. I wish. I've tried to learn, but <laughs> Just your like fingers, it. man. I know. They hurt. The blisters. The, oh, yeah. I've, I know C note, though. No, la, you know what I it? like? What instrument I really want to oh, fully dedicate time into? I was give you shit for it. Which one? Hey, go for it. Which one? The fucking saxophone or whatever? No. Oh, come on. You told uh, him I know, one. but not, it's too cool. difficult, bro. I don't yeah. want to put that right, much in I play the clarinet. I'll learn how to play the piano. Which one? Yes. Oh, piano. Piano. Oh, okay, so easy. that I, I started learning last year during the pandemic through an app. And I kind of got it down, but it's something that you just need to rigorous, rigorous. Well, for me, it's rigorous. Like, I, have a friend who, me. I have a friend who's been playing piano for, I don't even know how long, like it's forever. Beautiful. You know, and I'm like, I could literally just ask him to like tutor me. So I've been thinking like in I December. I'm like in December. That's something I want to start the new year with. Is like I don't think it's like the easiest totally. thing in the world. Dude. It's not. It's gonna take a long time, so, but yeah. it's fine. Yeah. I'm not trying to be the greatest piano player. I just want to learn how to play yeah. certain songs. Yeah, like me too. Yeah, <laughs> I I would try, but it's it's a lot of. Um, I guess it really depends your structure of like what you want to learn because it's like do you want to learn how to read notes do you want to just mm -hmm. learn how to play certain things so mm -hmm. yeah. for me i just want to be able to like that. hear a song and be like huh okay i think i can do that and there are you people I mean? who do um, yeah. that's how my friend pick is up on it. oh yeah yeah I, you could ask my friend to play any song and he'll be like okay and he'll Chava, just do it. you should play us a song i do play the guitar yeah I no i oh, haven't played in a long guitar time boy. You I don't should. have time to play. Like tune it real quick. Then dude, no, hell play no. Chala doesn't, Nena, you, Nena Chala Nena doesn't just, have very good time management. Let's be honest. Then I woke mm. up and then she's like, I'm just gonna put Chava on blast here. I'm gonna. You know why I like it? He's it a is hoe. Musico, Chava. I'm gonna embrace it. <laughs> calling him nah, out for being a hoe. <laughs> no, we're here to talk about you. I want to find out what Nena does in her free time. What are you doing in your free yeah, time? Yeah, what do you do outside of the radio thing? Um, Let's have, I spend time with my choco, my dog. Oh, you have. One or two dogs? No, just one. I mean, if you can't count my brother, but <laughs> <laughs> no, no, te creas. This is Choco. Oh, yeah, he's, he's big, huh? He's big. Um, he big is baby. a German wire-haired pointer mixed in with a lab, and he is just the sweetest, cutest dog. Do you guys have pets? Well, no, sadly, I want to get a dog soon, though. Yeah, yeah. You should. Oh yeah, you guys retriever. were talking about it in your last I want podcast. One, like, I want a golden retriever really bad. Oh, they're so yeah. cute. They're so cute. So you take him on hike and hikes and stuff like that, or um, dog parks for mm -hmm. sure. He can be at the Rancho Park for days and days and days, and it's so cute because I'm a total dog mom. Like you, you, you are. Yeah, you go out and you're like, oh, my baby's making friends. Like, <laughs> 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 he really does feel. I'm sure like a, a, a kid. kid, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, dude, you get attached to them the like they're your kids too. Totally. Like I had never had pets growing up. Mi mamá no me dejaba, mm -hmm. um, and you know now I've. It's been almost three years with, with Choco, and mm -hmm. uh, cool. yeah, it's a total life changer. It's I'm a, sure. It's a game changer for sure. The other thing sure. I want to find out, Nena, you mentioned that people say radio is kind of dying down. Uh-huh. So is the thought of starting a podcast of your own ever like... That's funny mind? that you say that, um, because I actually have an intro recorded from maybe three years ago. Um, Three years ago? I wanted to start a podcast. Uh, but then the radio thing happened. Uh -huh. And I never got to it. It's just one of those things where, just kind of like Nando was uh, saying previously, you just need to 
execute it. Exactly. Get excited what and start think? doing yeah. it. And, and I what? did. I got excited, but I never followed through with it. I did an intro and everything, but uh, my idea was going to be it's go- it was going to be a drinking podcast. Um, so like it was you do be it as you're drinking, right? Yeah, That's le iba cool. a poner <laughs> de un hidalgo. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I don't know if you guys have heard the Mexican si- saying when everyone's drinking. Órale, de un hidalgo. Oh, oh yeah, I have. Uh-huh. And I've then, never heard that. No? no. So basically. When someone says de un hidalgo, you have to drink it all because chinga su madre el que deje algo. Uh, You've never heard uh, that? de un hidalgo, chinga su madre. Yeah. yeah, like that means you just had to. Pero hidalgo, exactly. it doesn't have to do with hidalgo, like hidalgo, the Mexican. No, probably. I think it's more Maybe, for, huh? because it rhymes, like mm. chinga su madre el que de deje algo. Yeah, el que deje algo. Mm-hmm. So my idea was eso iba a ser el podcast uh, de un hidalgo, and I might still. Maybe one day. Maybe one day, right? Uh, and it was going to be a similar thing. I just wanted to have people, um, you know, local people mm-hmm. to to highlight their creativity or whatever they were doing. Because you do good with interviews. I feel like you would be a great Oh, I, I love them. I love knowing more about people, but they're time consuming, as I you know. guys would know. Yeah. And I just never got through, through to it. And I'm a big podcast listener myself. So siempre me dan ganas, me quedé mm-hmm. con la espinita, but maybe one day, maybe, maybe one, one day. Maybe one day. Um, mm-hmm. I know you told me this story about interviewing this famous guy. <gasps> Can you tell us about it? Okay, that is probably hands down the coolest thing that's ever happened let's to me. Let's hear it, let's hear it. So mm. I don't know if you guys are aware. A few years, when YouTube started back in like before these young young kids <laughs> uh do you guys remember youtube like with like all in the 2008 2009 yeah like all the iconic videos of yahweh oh yeah yeah, yeah. Eggway, or all the old gems all the old gems mm-hmm. yeah the I unicorn videos like the, shitty ass quality no, videos yeah. but yeah they were so <laughs> bad quality yeah. dude. <laughs> but they were so funny so funny and Back in the day, I was I was big on on watching Hector Leal, Whatever Tomorrow. Oh yeah, Whatever Tomorrow um, was big. Ben Shorts, Ben Shorts was always my favorite. He was the one who kind of started the um, like your yo mama jokes in Spanish, mm-hmm. like uh-huh. Ooh, que tu mamá se pinta los labios con un cheto. Uh-huh. Ooh, que tu mamá, you know, yeah. and it was just like funny damn things. Dude, I remember like that. those. Oh my god, this is so long ben ago. Shorts? Ben Shorts. Ben Shorts. Is this still um, around? Hector de de la Hoya. Hector de la Hoya is his sí. name. And he's still around. He is a big traveler. He's been to God. How many did he say? I think he said over over 52 countries. Damn. No, no me acuerdo cuántos, nice. pero he's big. Um, obviously, he, he made it big on YouTube uh, and then branched out to other platforms. He's wrote a book. He's done TED Talks. And one wow. day when I was still on Facebook, um, I was part of this group of his fans called La Isla, La Isla Benchortiana. And he was live. And it must have been pff, like midday in i mean midnight in in mexico city or wherever he was in mexico because it was like 10 o'clock here and there weren't a lot of people connected there was slowly like 60 and then 200 and i decided to shoot my shot i was like hector regalame i commented regalame una entrevista para mi mi estación de radio para and he just like reads it. I have a video actually because I started like oh, screen no. recording. I'm like just in case, just, just in case. case. And sure enough, he responds and he's like, "Nena Godinez, mándame un correo a tal tal y tal, and let's coordinate." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "No way!" <laughs> so I sent my email and I was like, "Hey, you know, whenever you can make it happen, let's do this." Um, didn't hear back from him. Nada, nada. And sure enough. I kept bugging him, and eventually I, it happened, and we did the interview, and it was great. It was awesome, and he put me on his podcast. Oh, wow. I didn't know that he was going to do that. Mm. He didn't. He didn't bring it up to me. Um, do you know what episode? It is. It is. Uh, se llama eh, La Mejor Comida del Mundo, episode sixty-five. I think. Damn, it dude, is. she remembers everything. If you're interested, uh, she got the logs. <laughs> She's got the and logs. And listen to La Nena, because yeah, I was... remember hearing a little bit of, of of that episode, and 
I, just, I mean, you did great. And I mean, Ben Schwartz is, is huge. He he has a bit, really big um, following. Mm -hmm. So his podcast se llama Soliloquio de Ben Schwartz. Okay. It is in Spanish, um, but I do believe it is 52 doo -doo -doo, in the 50s. La mejor comida del mundo. Well, point is, guys, um, I will have to send it to you guys. Mm -hmm. But it was probably the most exciting thing that's ever happened because he has millions of followers yeah. and mm -hmm. um, someone you look up to. Yeah, and it, it went really well. Mm -hmm. It was super improvised. He messaged me like an hour before and I, I didn't think he wanted to follow through with it. He emailed me. He was like, hey, can we do it in an hour? Um, I'll send you a link. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, I was like so unprepared for it. I hadn't asked, I hadn't thought about any questions mm -hmm. or anything. And sure enough, it, it happened. Uh, the hour went by. He was like, I'll send you a link mm -hmm. um, because he wasn't going to give me his number or anything, obviously. Yeah. And I, obviously you went to the, I stayed, well, I went back to the station so I could use the microphone and it sounded really good. It sounded mm -hmm. really good. I was really happy with the result after. I was really nervous too. Um, which one is it? I, I was really nervous, but it, it, it all worked out. Um, I'll have to send it to you guys. No, send it to me. I want to check it out more. Yeah, me too. More in depth. Definitely want to hear it out. Because how do you even prepare for <coughs> an interview? Like, 67. what are some of the things that you do? This one, guys. What, 60 what? Episodio 67. El país con la comida más rica. Uh -huh. And... The country with the best food. Uh -huh. And what did you guys talk about on the podcast? On well, the, he's yeah. a he's a traveler, so, so you just asked him about his life and stuff. Yeah, like that? I, I asked him about the lifestyle, you know, of a traveler, mm -hmm. what he what he likes, uh, donde está la mejor comida del mundo. Mm -hmm. Where did he say? Yucatan. Really, Yucatan, Mexico. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. He said it's like stepping into a whole other. I mean, it's Mexico, but. Mm -hmm. And we're obviously used to good Mexican food. Yeah. Uh, but he said, Entra a Yucatan is... Damn, well, I gotta go to Yucatan, bro. We yeah. have to. <clears throat> we have to just go. I was gonna, yeah, I'm curious to see what your thoughts are on how to be a good interviewer. Like, how do you prepare for it? Um, She's like, I don't. Did you ever take any classes? Did yeah. you ever, like, take any courses, anything? I think it comes with the years. Um, yeah. Just conducting an interview here and there. And you just kind of see what works what doesn't work mm -hmm. i think it's important to to keep things natural and i don't know when you guys take pictures what do you guys think is is a good way to have someone open up well talking to them mm -hmm. making them feel comfortable right i heard um people refer to joe rogan mm -hmm. that they say that he's a really, really good interviewer yeah and they just say that he's just interested and like yes. that's a good, showing interest yeah. you have to be a good listener <clears throat> for sure yeah. uh, because you can't be interviewing someone and cut them off um when you're in the, you know they're in the middle of the thought process mm -hmm. so yeah uh i think being a good listener comes with the territory yeah. i absolutely. think it's like that with us too though is like if you show your clients interest on their life mm -hmm. or what they do they seem to just open up to you more because right. then they feel <coughs> sorry oh, watch out guys jeez um <clears throat> I've had a really dry throat the past few days. Guys. I swear I don't have COVID. I'm vaccinated. Um, oh, snap. But, like, they they definitely seem to uh, kind of just get more comfortable at this shoot because then it almost comes off like they're talking to more like a friend than, like, a stranger. Yeah. Or, like, I, at least, like, me and him, I feel like we both agree that when we meet new clients, we try to just kind of, like, make them not think it's a photo shoot you know yes. like hey we're just kind of here to do this but like it's not that serious you know like don't don't feel so uptight and like stressed out and it's that you're tough not it's tough that. i mean when i was doing those pageants i honestly think i won the pageants i did three pageants and i won two out of the three and the other one i placed in the top five mm -hmm. but I don't ever, I genuinely don't think that it was my pictures that like did it. Mm -hmm. It was always like the, the answering portion of it. Yeah. You hand me a mic and I'll take it's over hard. the whole It'll world. Yeah. But 
when it comes to pictures, oh God, I'm <laughs> so cringe. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. <laughs> She's not that bad. No, I am. I was being nice. I but took pictures of her one time. She wasn't that bad. The Yeah, the only time that you've taken pictures of me, that was the last thing that I, and it, it was because I needed the pictures <laughs> for channel two. Yeah, uh-huh. for something. Yeah, because they used to have like a really weird picture of me, like, <laughs> like a t-shirt and I wasn't even wearing any makeup yeah, with like these big the, headphones. The updated. <laughs> <laughs> she needed the new update. Yeah, I'm like, pick. yeah, I gotta look professional. And um, that's when Chao was blowing up. Uh, oh, then his come up. Yeah. <laughs> I just started <laughs> seeing it. this Chava, Chava, Chava everywhere. Chava I was like, yeah, let's see what blast. this Chava is all about. <laughs> and I'm so glad that I, I, I did it because immediately that's what I told Chava. I was like, I felt really comfortable. Um, so, but you guys are very welcoming. So, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that, a nice compliment. Yeah, I, I think. That's why you guys do so well. Because I have heard of Nanders. Like Nanders was like the name oh when I was God. still. I no, seriously. It's true. It is true. What was I mean, it? Like stickers or something oh, yeah. that you were yeah, I just last remember year. seeing you everywhere, everywhere. Everywhere when I was still on Instagram. Because the thing with uh, being good with making people feel good, even when we started this. I would just watch videos on YouTube because I really wanted to try, right? Mm. And I feel Denver like... Alert, guys. Oh, did you guys all get one? Yeah. Did you guys steal a car or something? Grand Prix? Yeah, bro. If anybody sees a Silverado... It's on its way to... Oh, no, uh, wait. A Grand... From Idaho to Arizona? What the hell? Yeah, Arizona. Careful. Amber Alert. No, well, like I was saying, one of those things that I really wanted to get good at, you know? Just to, like, make, you know, my shoots go easier, to make the people that come here feel more at ease. And I still sometimes struggle. I'm like, am I even doing, like, a good job? Or, like, you know, I just want to make sure. But I've been really, really actively trying to learn different techniques to, like, make people feel more comfortable. I think the same thing comes with interviewing. I think, like, uh, for me, I used to research it. But then I realized that if I just act myself, people like that. Yes, yes, 100%, because it's always weird, and people can tell when, you know, you're, like, during interviewing. Uh, if like, you're if not you're very, trying too hard? If you're trying too mm-hmm. hard, and I'd imagine it's the same in pictures. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 It, it works both ways. Like, if the, the person you're photographing is trying a little too much, you're just like, yo, loosen up a little bit, yeah. like, it's fine. But I also think, I mean, it just comes with the personality, because not everyone has the same personality, but, like, I think, like, when I met Chava, he was more shy, but I think his, like, reservedness has gone away more, so people kind of see, like, his personality now, and yes. he, he doesn't just show it through stories or on the podcast, like, if you are with him outside of that or you're shooting with him, you he, feel he's that. the same way, and for me, like, I was always like that, like, I was never afraid to, like, post stuff on my stories that wasn't photography, like... I'll post whatever. And then when I'm at a shoot and people bring something up, I'll have a conversation with them about them, like about literally anything. You know, I'll see some dude with like an anime focus. I'm like, bro, who's your favorite character? And then dude is like in the best mood after that. Cause he's like, like, Oh wow, this isn't awkward. Yeah. Yeah. And like my advice, cause people ask me about couples all the time. They're like, how do you help the guy loosen up? And I'm like, literally pick one thing to talk to him about. But, like, it's easier as a guy, I think, to talk to guys, vice versa, girls to girls, Mm -hmm. in my opinion. Like, a lot of the times when you do a couple session, the girl probably booked it. Like, it's very unlikely that the guy... Right, the guy's, like, being dragged there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, the guy usually gets dragged there because he's the boyfriend. So, he already almost doesn't want to be there. And he's just kind of like, dude, this is weird. Like, I don't like my photo taken. And for me, it's always, like... The minute I go to shake their hand, I try to find one thing. Whether it's, like, the outfit something on their car if i see a phone case a lanyard like a tattoo like literally anything and if you just say one little thing and you get in a conversation they immediately are just like oh yeah i can just talk to this person i think that's a good um, advice for interviewing too Mm -hmm. um icebreakers icebreakers are so important (laughs) so important it is a game changer Mm -hmm. if you can asi como dice nando if you can find one thing you can relate with this person the tension kind of like mm-hmm. goes away. Little I've had by some little. funny ones where you can clearly see that the guy, the you know husband, the whatever, 
they just feel uncomfortable mm-hmm. doing the shoot. You know, they show up, you can see their face. It's like they don't want to be there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, Sonríe, guapo. It's kind of a, <laughs> <laughs> dude, he's being hella sus with the wedding. Fucking, but anyway, I'll go into I'm that later. I'm super sus to some of my clients. But I'm then like, after the shoot, they're like, oh, can we do this? Can we do that? Like, they're just like, yeah, they open want up. Picture. Like, hey, take one picture of me right here. Or yeah. like, let's do over, this over so here. So, you know? how do you think? On average, what do you guys think would be like the ideal time to book a shoot? Because you guys probably know that the first, I don't know, mm. 10, 15 minutes is like weird. Or, oh, I see. What, oh, what like do you think would be, frame? yeah, what, what do you think would be like the okay. ideal time? So that's a book? great question because me and him do like mini sessions too, okay. which are like 20 minutes. And usually like the first, I think the first five to 10 minutes, depending on how talkative you are are for like kind of breaking the ice okay. a little bit oh, and then yeah. after that they loosen up so you can still do it you know and it all depends on people's personality you know i've had couples who show up where the guy is just he's like dude i'm chilling like just tell me what to do and i'm like okay cool and then we get it done in 20 minutes because it's a mini or whatever but like for me i offered 30 minute or one hour sessions okay and i mean you still do just do the one right i do 45 which is still a great time because yeah. it's like not too long not too short right yeah, some of but the best photos come up by the end yeah, yeah facts. Because, that's like a photographer yeah, thing yeah i noticed that i always get my best pictures towards the end and you know what bro i saw this thing Don't the other day touch me man why are you touching me like that i was just talking about how you're being sus all the time Ay, te gusta. <laughs> anyways <laughs> I, <just wait. laughs> I literally went like this to him and he freaks out five more times and then i'll call the cops soon <laughs> you're so dumb <laughs> <laughs> but like <laughs> uh but um like see like i lost my turn of thought now you fool <laughs> 45 minutes <laughs> oh yeah okay. so um you know, I think a 30 minute session is plenty of time. It's just you have to use the first little bit to kind of break the ice. Like totally. I said. And not just for the guys. I'm not going to sit here and say the guys are like that. Cause sometimes girls are just very shy and they don't really know what to do. Or like they're just it's a whole new thing for them. So they're like, I've never gotten my couple taken or my grad or whatever it is mm-hmm. you're doing. Um, so I just think the faster you can break the ice, the, the smoother better. the rest of the shoot goes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, like it's just with interviewing, you oh, know. I'm gonna have to book with with Nando book with and Nando. see how yeah, it is. Yeah. Go for it. We'll sh- we'll do because I'm really bad. I'm like the entire time. I'm like well, and now that we, I feel like this, now that this all I've weird like, intense. I she's mean, like, she's the type to be like, is this good? Is this good? Yeah. Like, oh, nonstop. The yeah. Whole time. Don't worry, I get those a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but like for me, I always like to pose people, and so does Chava. You know, like I don't show up to a shoot, and I'm like, you do whatever. I'm just like, good. Gosh, you, it's yeah. so helpful because. Oh yeah. When I was in pageants, we dealt with a lot of different uh, photographers. Yeah. And that was always the difficult part for me. I was like, dude, this thing. But do? it's not on my mind. See, like, what to do? I'm just yeah. like. It's a thing for some photographers, yeah. which is really weird to me. Because, like, for me, I can't it's imagine. Essential, like, right? I can't imagine not posing people at this point. Exactly. I do it every single time. The only time I don't do it is when I shoot with, like, a model who she models. So she poses right, she's herself. Just being free. Because she just know knows what to do. And I'm like, cool, this is nice. You know, I'll just click away. Mm-hmm. But. Anyone who isn't a model, yeah, like, the average Joe doesn't know. I how just, to yeah. I feel like it's so straighter. natural to help them pose, and that that just kind of takes off some pressure from them. Like people will show up and they're like, "Hey, I hear this sentence almost every time," and all you know who you are, <laughs> all you watching, because you've told me the sentence. They're like, "I'm so awkward. I never get my photo taken. Can you tell me what to do?" And I'm like, "Yes, wow. I will literally direct you the I've whole shoot." And they so always started even, with, so with people that. people even ask you before booking with you. Oh, me too. Like, Are you, you going to? to? Do? Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's people who threw a That's message before I even show up to the shoot. They're like, You're, you'll help me pose, right? I'm like, yeah, totally. Yeah, because like, there are photographers that don't. No, I know. And it's never made sense to me. Me neither. I don't get it. Yeah. Look. You have to like at least be talkative. And mm-hmm. if you're not, then you better learn how to be talkative. Because what I did see that... Sorry, just cut you off. No, no, no. You're um... Fine. What I learned that helped me with with photo shoots when I was doing them again, I, I never did them for fun. It was strictly for pageants. Was music? Oh, having well, music playing. Too. Yeah, I've been doing that recently. Funny enough, I've never, unless it's in, in the studio, I've never actually had music outside. Okay, which is funny, but I've had it a few times if I know them well enough to know their music taste. Okay, but 
I mean, because I'll listen to whatever. So I'm like, oh, but yeah, it's a good put? idea. People, other photographers even mention that too. Mm-hmm. I think so. when you're doing collaborative work, like with one person, even if they know what to do, it just kind of, like he said, here in the studio, I'm sure this is like a great environment. Because here, music. like, yeah. you can hear the echo. Yeah, like, like you just kind of get in your don't okay. have music on, then it's like, yeah. oh, I can listen to myself. <laughs> <laughs> this is For me, outside, it's like you're outside, so you don't necessarily need it all that much. Right, but it, it helps. So much going on. It helps a little bit. Like I said, for me, it's just, my strat is just. I show up, I meet you, I introduce myself, you introduce yourself to me, and then I'm like, okay, let me find what to talk to you about. That's neat. You know, whether it's like, if I can't find something, I'm like, how long have you guys been together? Where are you from? How long have you lived here? What do you do for work? Like, if you ask people questions and you show that you're interested in them, I think it just automatically relaxes you. Yes. It's just with anybody, you not even at a photo shoot, like you want to date. You don't want to talk about yourself. You want to ask them about them. Exactly. Well, Shall I take Nana? notes? You're making your, <laughs> are you making your comeback to the photo shoot scene? You're going to be a model now? Dude, um, I, she already said she's booking with me. Yeah, bro. I'm gonna we're, book we're, we're about to get her started again, dude. Nana, yeah. we're going to get you back into it. One day, yeah. Now, I'm, I'm just playing. Open. What do you have? What's in your plans for the future? I know um, 2021. I'm also going to backtrack a bit because you mentioned at the beginning that you left your job so tell us about that yeah so i put in my notice yesterday guys at my i um i have two jobs so i obviously am at at the radio in the afternoons and i work in an office in, in the morning and i came in here and i was like guys i put in my notice can we talk about it yeah we need to talk about 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 it she says and i think it's really important to there has to be an art in letting go, whether that's letting go of a relationship, letting go of a job, letting go of bad memories or bad habits. Mm -hmm. There has to be an art in letting go. And lately, it's been a really tough year. Um, I lost a really, really good friend in, in February. Uh, DJ Big Worm. I don't know. Oh, I heard about that. that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank mm-hmm. you. Uh, such, such a creative, bien chiquito, super young, um, very creative person. And he was always around. It really struck me. I had never lost anyone. Mm. I know that 2020 was a tough year. For, because of the pandemic, a lot of people lost uh, loved ones, but I had never lost anyone. So February, just like, whew, it really hit me. And then recently, I lost a another friend, um, very pretty, well-known girl in, in Reno that I'm sure you guys heard about too. And those little things get me thinking. Uh, lately, I've been really stressed at, at my job in the mornings, and it's really overwhelming and it can be really a really rewarding job too mm-hmm. but it's really difficult because i work in an industry where i literally have zero control over people mm. um i do what i'm supposed to do hoping that this person will follow through and then it doesn't and mm. so i it, it's it becomes very stressful and lately i've just felt overwhelmed and i think of worm and i think of my friend grecia and I'm like, man, if they knew that they wouldn't be here today, would they be stressing about a job? Would they Mm -hmm. be stressing about... You just never know. Yeah. Would they be stressing about X, Y, and Z? So um, I'm trying to take it with like a grain of salt. Like, okay, well, I've... Again, I'm a really impulsive person. Yesterday was a tough day for me. And I was like, you know what? I'm putting in my notice. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't do this. I'm going to do this for... I'm going to power it out for the rest of the year. Yeah. And starting next year, a ver que pedo. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> Dude, you're so talented. You're so great. Uh, you have you're gonna you find just, something. The, the that thing you can is, do. like, it's just obviously you know we're self-employed now, but like we we had jobs beforehand, and mm-hmm. it's like I tell people all the time who are still like in a a normal job, I guess mm-hmm. you could call it, and I'm like, you know how many jobs there are out there that you don't have to settle. Like mm-hmm. you can find something else. Like if you're that, I I I value personal happiness and mental sake over anything. Yes. And I'm like, don't. Amen to that. Like, do not be afraid to leave a job because you're stressed out every single day because you're not happy. Oh, mm-hmm. but it's income. I'm like, income will come no matter what. Like you'll find something else. 1, Obviously, don't percent. just like show up and I'm like, yo, I'm out. And you walk out, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Without having some sort of B plan. You have to be reasonable. Yes. But it's like, 
if the minute you just don't enjoy going to your job, start looking for somewhere else and then just slowly leave. And that's you know? so important, especially I think um, I, I think it's a cultural thing where we, you know, we, we come to this country and w- seeking opportunity. Mm-hmm. So I think it's very uh you know, deep in, in us. Kind of ingrained in us. Yeah, ingrained mm-hmm. in us that... Like you have to put up with stuff. Yeah, that we just, you know, like we got to work. That's job, work. Gotta work. And that you got to work. And <clears throat> así como dice Nando, I think lately I've just realized that life is short. And life happiness short. and being happy should be a priority. And it's not for a lot mm-hmm. of people because mm-hmm. we're worried about income. We're, you don't think I'm worried about like things I... I, most of my money comes from my morning job. Mm-hmm. Uh, the radio doesn't pay a whole lot of money. I mean, there's the radio joke of what's uh, the difference between a radio DJ and a pizza? <laughs> what is it? A pizza can feed a family of oh four. My God. Oh, <laughs> damn, that's tough. <laughs> so I, I do the radio stuff because I like it, because yeah. I'm passionate it's about it. It's not for the money for you, which it's is great. It's not That's for the it money. It never yeah. was. And when I started doing radio again, I was like, oh, this is fun. I thought I was going to do it for free when they started talking to me. Mm-hmm. And then eventually they were like, oh, you're going to make X, Y, and Z. And I was like, oh, I'm even getting paid for this. Cool. Um, but it was never about the money. So I worry about those stuff. I'm like, yeah, it's income and I have to do this and this and mm-hmm. life is expensive right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm again, I'm trying to take it with a grain of uh, salt. I think it's really important to, to focus on our mental health. Porque hoy estamos y mañana no se sabe. This past year, I think, you know, with COVID and everything, mm-hmm. a lot of people obviously were stuck in their own head for a long time Mm -hmm. and i think it's made people realize that like like mental health is like not a joke you know like you should really look into it if you feel something or if you just are not happy it's okay to go to therapy yes it's okay to seek help if someone judges you for it they probably shouldn't be in your life anyways Mm -hmm surround yourself with people who support you through that first of all because you can tell people about it but does that mean that they're going to be supportive no because they might not understand it which is okay not everyone has to understand what it is but it's also like you'll have the people who know what you may be going through and they just support you and those are people you need to have around yes like i i have come to a point where i'm like if you're not really bringing any positive or valuable into my life you probably won't see me much exactly sorry to sound selfish or sound mean but like you got to worry about yourself man because no one else is going to do it for you honestly Mm -hmm. at this point so Mm -hmm. the other thing that uh, i believe is like we talk about mental health a lot sometimes and we see it on social media right but like i don't think I think death really puts things into perspective. Oh yeah, a lot yes, more. yeah, yes. And that's when it makes you realize that you know you talk about mental health, but you don't really take the steps to to do to it. help with your mental health. You know, totally. So if anything, I'm happy that you took the step and that Thank you, you are going to go forward. It. And yeah, you know, like I said, you're super <clears throat> talented too. Like, Honestly, I'll like yeah, it out. It's, I'm not if too that job concerned. was making you feel the way you said good move Mm -hmm. exactly good move to get out of there it just recently because i really enjoy it don't get me wrong i really enjoy it but recently it's really been getting to me and um even yesterday when i i submitted my my formal resignation via email to my boss he was like whoa like i did not see that coming i didn't know that you were considering leaving Mm -hmm. the company and it was like well me either it was just like a a thing i had a bad day and that's kind of what it took I'm yeah, over it. That's and just what it took for you to get there. Exactly. So mm-hmm. what am I going to do? You know, keep moving, having bad days and have it affect me. And it's slowly, I feel less creative by mm-hmm. the day. I feel like um, I don't show, because I, I transition very quickly. I, f- I feel like I'm taking masks as I go. Um, you know, in the morning, I'm Nana from, from this company who does all of this. And then immediately after, I'm like Nana from the radio. Yeah, and switch. I have to be you know, <clears throat> excited about life. And I have to be on air for 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 the rest of the day. So... I, I felt it kind of like every day was kind of like pulling on me like, oh, okay, I have to 
cheer up or and i i just don't want that i don't want that anymore good for you so take care of yourselves facts yeah exactly chava Yes. Take care of yourself. Take care of Dude, yourself. Honestly, if it means the whole life, you do. It. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what gets you through hey, it, be my go. See, go ahead, Full bro. Full circle. <laughs> go ahead. Um, no, but really, because sometimes even us, like I tend to overwork myself all the time. Mm-hmm. Gets me to a point where I'm not happy, where I'm kind of sad, having like negative thoughts and stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, take care of your mental health. Like try it. Like go take to steps towards go it. to therapy. It's good. Exercise. Do things that make you happy. I was seeing this thing um, that even the, like small little moments throughout the day that make you happy is better than having like one big moment where oh, yeah. you are happy during the mm-hmm. week, you know? So you want to gotcha, have like this yeah. little like momentum, you know? Like, oh, if you're at the red light and instead of getting frustrated, that's a moment that you have to like reflect on your life be grateful yes. so you come you turn this bad negative moment into like a positive one yeah and you can have multiple of those throughout the day you know and it, it is definitely um it is it's something that you do have to practice like there are people who wake up and i try i really do genuinely try I'm not an everyday person, but there are people who wake up and, you know, count their blessings mm-hmm. uh, yeah, instead of, you know, jumping and going to your phone immediately. Take a moment to reflect and say, hey, yeah. I'm here today. It's a good, It's going to be a good day. I'm, alive. I'm grateful for this and this and this. And I think if you can do that uh, for a month or yeah. a week or so, it becomes a habit. Oh, yeah. So I think, como dice Nando, going to therapy is really important because a lot of, there's this huge stigma on, you know, especially culturally, like we don't talk about mental no. health. We don't talk about therapy. Not enough. Not enough. And we, we go to therapy and we learn to listen to ourselves, to our needs, because you don't go to therapy expecting to find the answers. No. Little by little, you're like, oh, I get it. Mm-hmm. This is a, a therapist is there to guide you and, and you know, take, make you see. Yeah, and it pic- takes time. Like people can't expect it to happen overnight. No. You know what I mean? So personal yeah. experience, guys, go to therapy. Yeah. Me it's too. good for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, well Nana, thank you very much. Thank you guys. This has been a pleasure. Yeah, Extremely I could talk to you guys for to hours. Talk about. You, you're so good at talking. Yeah, Damn. Dude. Well, thanks, guys. She's a radio personality, man. I so. could talk you to know, you guys You know, you put y'all on blast, but still, that was hilarious. Know, right? so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all here for it. I'm right, all here for it. Phil, dude. No. Dude, Immediately. She pulled out the timestamp and, we and everything, <laughs> bro. Yeah. It's, just, it's just funnier because we were having a we conversation. Were about that. I was like, I think people are like starting to realize that I've been kind of like, <laughs> But like, he's like, wilding like, out. And I was like, okay. Chavo, you got to relax, bro. Damn. And then we, we come in here and you're like, it. timestamp, <laughs> minute, one twenty second. Being a host should be normal. I'm like, that is hilarious. Because right so before funny. you came in, we were having That's a talk epic. in the living room about it. I'm like, but you know, I just, I'm openly... I, I talk about it, you know. Like I'm at least he's not afraid to say it. Exactly. Yeah, I'm dating. Like I'm trying. That's and, good. You know? Hey, whatever. You don't want an explanation yeah, we'll to see. anyone at the end of no. the day. No, like you, you do, do not. You, I might act surprised, but then I talk about it on the podcast, and you know we do have like five listeners. So. <laughs> yeah, five <laughs> hey, listeners. A lo, mejor, a lo mejor de aquí salen más. Hey, who yeah. knows? Mm. No, but I. No, I think I'd plenty like, of people watch this stuff, dude. Uh, I get yeah. brought. I get it brought up all the time. Yeah. yeah. Don't. I see don't under estimate your podcast yeah, guys yeah, yeah. I it has reached it's, it's good mm-hmm. event it's good event but yeah well i would definitely like to to highlight um how cool this is uh what you guys are doing mad mad praise to you thank guys you. thank you man. appreciate it, it is, a lot it coming is from you. neat um having creatives giving again this platform to other creatives and like nando was saying earlier who cares about the you know amount of followers you have and this and that? You're just giving someone the space and the time, mm-hmm. and that can make a whole difference for for anyone you know that mm-hmm. you guys. I just are see it as on the map. For I sure. see it as like we're all so different and so interesting in one way or another. Like why not show it? Yeah, you know. Yeah, you might think you're a boring person, but you could be very interesting to someone else. I've learned right. a lot of things about cool people that i didn't know through you i mean we podcast. did too like having them here and like talking to them you're like what I never yeah knew some were, people like, i'm acquainted or... with um yeah. and i thought it was really cool to get to see them on the podcast like uh 
Vero. Vero's great. I'm a, oh, Vero's uh, amazing. Mm-hmm. Vero's great. Yeah, Vero's super Vero. cool. Michael, um, I graduated. I was always acquainted. I, Warner? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, I graduated ACT Michael. with him. We have his stickers over here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah We're about to, really I'm going to see that guy, guy on Friday. Cool. He's second shooting for me at a wedding, so. Oh, oh nice, nice. nice. Um, yeah, we were, we went to the same school, and so I was, like, familiar with him. It was really cool to see him and learn like more Josiah? about him. Josiah's music? You like that too, right? Um, the guy no, that came in no lo escuché. The hip- Oh, Josiah? Josiah. Oh, yeah. Josiah, if you are watching this, I am a big, big fan. I listen <laughs> to Bombay on my way to work like a <laughs> bad bitch. I feel cool. <laughs> nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Jasmine, I worked for with Jasmine for a little bit. I thought it was really mm, cool that you guys brought her on the podcast. That's cool. Uh, I know that she was starting to do photography when I like, kind of. Yeah, she's it. been it in a few years. And yeah, she's so, killing it. Um, <clears throat> it's just been neat to see the cool people you guys have on here again. Mm. People that I I've never met like mo, um, esta modelo venezolana. Oh, Edmar. Yeah, Edmar. great mm-hmm. personality. Like, it's just cool to me. I love, love what you guys are doing. So, mad praise to you Thank guys. You. Thank you. You're Keep amazing. listening. Definitely worth listening stay to. Stay tuned to 101.7 when? Yeah, uh, 101.7, uh, Monday through Friday, 3 to 6. We have good music. If you guys ever want to listen to good music, holla at your girl. <laughs> there you go. Tocamos lo que le gusta. There you go. Boom. Uh, un a Al puro cien. Bueno, pues, muchas gracias, Nana. Gracias yeah, thank a ustedes. You for coming. Muy buenas great. noches. Y gracias para todo el público, besotes. Sí, Peace out. Bye. See you next week. Bye.